Well, welcome back. What we've got today, this is a 2010 Ford Focus with a no-start issue. Uh, it's kind of an interesting issue with a quick and easy diagnosis I thought I'd share. First thing we do on a no-start, key the key, key it up, crank no-start, and observe the lights on the dash. Everything lights up as it should. Notice in the lower left corner, over here, the flashing anti-theft light. We have, uh, right off the bat, we know that this is a security lockout issue. Turn it to the crank position, and nothing happens. The other interesting thing is you notice the odometer, low tire pressure, we don't worry about that. Odometer, miles to E, fuel level, all those that give us a little interest. To find out some information, the first thing I wanted to do was to try to scan the car. So, we'll use our scanner. Hopefully this will show through. Engine. Connect K20, it's already connected. And I'm going to try to display data. It doesn't matter. What's going to occur is, you notice it says no communication. Is key on? Well, yes, the key is on. Um, I've double checked this to verify that everything is hooked up. So what we're going to do now, sorry about that, we'll exit back out of that, exit back out of that. Let's talk to somebody different. We'll go to the analog brake computer, see if it'll communicate there. K20 key again, still connected. Display data. And in this case, there we go. We have data on the ABS computer. So right off the bat, that's something a little bit a little bit different. No communication with the PCM, but I do have communication with the ABS. Now, you know, I won't de delay everything here, but I went through several of these other systems, and they do all communicate. Everything the car is equipped with will communicate, except for the PCM. The next thing we want to do is see if the PCM is actually getting power. One of the easiest ways to do that is to check for a 5 volt reference. I'll show you under the hood in a second, but what I've done is I've hooked up this multimeter is attached to the reference line of the air conditioning uh, high pressure, the air conditioning pressure switch. There's a VREF line to the pressure switch and I've actually just disconnected that switch. The red line from the voltmeter is connected to the VREF, the black line to ground key is off, zero volts, key on, I have five volts, key on, five volts, key off, zero volts. That simple test all by itself proves that the computer has power, has ground, is turning on, can supply a five volt reference. So I already know that I have a valid power and ground situation going on with the computer. Just that simple. If I'd have had a zero volts issue here, the processor is possibly not getting power, has a bad ground. Now that's the second step. The next thing we want to do is to see if and how the computer maybe is communicating. What we're going to do with that is something a little bit different. There's the circuit, air conditioning, pressure switch. All I've done is disconnected it, attached the hot wire there for my 5 volt reference that goes up to the multimeter. By referencing the, the uh, computer network charts, pin 14, data link connector on the left. The highlighted line is the CAN low circuit. And it carries on to all of the ones. There's a CAN high, CAN low that connects to all the modules indicated on the right and the left. The modules on the right, the top is PCM, second is ABS. I was able to talk to the ABS module, not the PCM. The highlighted line shows me that circuit, that wiring circuit to the PCM. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to graph communication on pin 14 at the data link connector on the left hand side and compare it to a back probe of the PCM here. That back probe of the PCM 
is there, pin 43, CAN bus, high speed, low, which is a white wire. These are copied off of Mitchell. Any decent uh, professional resource should be able to get you these. PCM on this car exists right here next to the battery. I've taken and back probed the white wire, pin 43, and that comes up comes up here to my graphing multimeter, Vantage Pro. While that's firing up, we're going to go inside the vehicle. I'm going to remove the data link connector or the uh, scan tool to make it easier for myself. I already pre-marked pin 14 and using the correct tool we're going to plug into pin 14. So all I've done is I've just taken this out and I'm connected to pin 14. My graphing multimeter is attached to pin 14 on the yellow circuit. The green circuit attaches to the CAN low at the processor. Let's see if we can get back down here. We're going to come down here to lab scope, two channel lab scope. If I'm lucky, it's saved all my presets. Looks like it may have. And we're going to turn the key on. And with the key on, again, the yellow line is attached to the yellow wire is attached to back probing. The, the uh, I'm sorry, the yellow wire is attached to the data link connector. The green wire is back probing the PCM on the circuit. Now it's a little hard to see. Let's just pause that. And get where I have a signal. Alright. What I'm looking at here is communication on the wire. I have myself set at, you can't see it now, but it's 100 microseconds time frame from left to right. We're actually looking at the on-off pulses of the computer communication. Because this is a low circuit, every time that this pulls down, that's a 1. Every time it lets back up is a 0. And so this is the binary code. We're actually looking at the binary code. What this proves to me is that the circuits for the CAN communication circuits are intact and are functioning. That the communication on the CAN bus available at the data link connector pin 14, the yellow wire, the yellow wire, and the CAN bus communication at the PCM pin 43, which is the green wire, are identical. Every time I have a high, I have a high. Every time I have a low, I have a low, and so forth. And so these two patterns absolutely match each other. Because those two patterns absolutely match each other, I know that the communication is the same in both locations. Because the scan tool could not communicate with the PCM, and by the way, there were U codes, network codes, and other modules also indicating they could not communicate with the PCM. So because there's no communication with the PCM, but I have identical bus communications at both locations, I know the communications circuits of the network are intact and functioning as they should. I've proven the computer can turn on, has power and ground, just simply by looking at the 5 volt reference available. What I have here is very simply a computer, the PCM, who internally now has quit communicating on the bus line. There's no doubt left about what's occurring here. The communication circuits are valid. The computer can turn on. Once the computer turns on, it should immediately begin processing and communicating on the CAN circuit. I don't know what these messages are. It doesn't matter. I just know that I have the same messages at the data link connector that I have at the PCM and there is no communication with the PCM, ergo the PCM internally is not communicating. So it's a real quick and easy diagnosis, an easy way to deal with it. 
uh, a little slicker here because I already had it set up, but it's the basic idea. You observe the issue, check with your scan tool and determine you had no communication. Verified computer could turn on. Verified communications avenues, the physical network, was valid. And we're done. The car needs a PCM. And at this point, this one is still under its emissions warranty, so it'll be going to the dealer. And uh, the uh, PCM should be covered under warranty for us. Hopefully that uh, adds a, sheds a little light on some things, and please uh, feel free to comment. Thank you.